Let's take a look at supercritical behavior. And again, we'll come back to a substance we've looked at a bit before, namely carbon dioxide. And so I'll remind you, we actually spent some time when we were looking at real gases talking about supercritical phenomena. And on the phase diagram for carbon dioxide, we find that the critical point is here at 30.98 degrees Celsius and a pressure on the order of 71, 72 atmospheres. And recall that that critical temperature is the temperature above which a gas cannot be liquefied no matter how much pressure you apply to it. The density will increase, that is the volume it occupies will shrink and shrink, but you won't see a phase transition. So here I'm showing the liquid and gas densities along a coexistence curve. So remember, a coexistence curve is one of these curves that tells you how pressure and temperature change simultaneously in order to maintain both phases in equilibrium. And so this left-hand plot for benzene is the density of the two different phases, gas and liquid, as a function of temperature, letting the pressure adjust so that both phases continue to be present. So as I raise the temperature, if I go look over here, it looks as though I'm going to have to allow the pressure to be increasing as well in order to stay on the coexistence curve. But now if I ask the question, what do the densities of those two phases look like as I'm following that coexistence curve? At low temperatures, the gas is really quite uh, dilute, quite non-dense, if you like. The liquid, on the other hand, being a condensed phase, has a much higher density. But as I continue to increase the temperature, the liquid begins to become, oh, there I am saying liquid, but pointing at the gas. The gas becomes more dense, so it's occupying less volume. The pressure is compressing it into less volume. The liquid is becoming less dense, so it is expanding, if you like. And they are approaching one another until you hit a certain temperature, the critical temperature, at which the two densities coalesce. So they're identical, and any temperature increase beyond that leads to a density that will be characteristic for that temperature and whatever pressure you've chosen, but you don't see two phases in equilibrium. You've just got some sort of a fluid, a supercritical fluid, where you have two degrees of freedom that you now can control, temperature and pressure. It will adjust the density, but there's no phase change. Right, and so if you like, uh, the, I could imagine starting at this red phase point, which is a certain temperature and pressure, and that would be shown here. That would be the gas and the liquid. And now as I go to the blue phase point, I've increased the temperature, I've increased the pressure, and I apologize that this is in Kelvin and this is in Celsius, so this scale is uh, 273 less than this one, but in any case, the blue point getting closer to the critical point is the one that has the smaller liquid density, the higher gas density, and ultimately I hit the critical point and I'm a supercritical fluid. And so that's actually how one assesses where the critical point is to some extent. Namely, you look at the enthalpy of vaporization, right? the heat that needs to be added into the system in order to accomplish a phase change, to take something from the liquid to the gas phase. So we discussed that transition enthalpy earlier in the course. At the critical temperature, the molar enthalpy of vaporization goes to zero. It doesn't take any heat because there is no phase change anymore. And so it, it leads to sort of an interesting phenomenon in a sense because within the supercritical regime, there's an opportunity to control both degrees of freedom. One in principle could begin beyond the critical point in temperature, so here it's a supercritical fluid, adjust the temperature and the pressure up a bit, now start adjusting the temperature back down as we increase the pressure, now continue to bring the temperature down but decrease the pressure, and take the system from a supercritical fluid, we could have actually begun in the gas region if we'd been here to the left of the critical point, all the way around the critical point to a liquid, never having undergone a true phase transition. So that is just the nature of, of matter as you are near that critical point. 
So this is a, a different colorful uh, example of the phase diagram of carbon dioxide that if you recall all the way back to the beginning of the course appeared in uh, module one. And incidentally, you can tell that this colorful diagram probably came from uh, Europe or maybe South America because we've got commas in place of decimal points. But this is our, our friend carbon dioxide again. So here is the vapor liquid coexistence curve and the critical pressure and the critical temperature and all the other uh, solid, liquid, gas, supercritical fluid regions marked. The last thing I'll say while we're on the subject of the phase diagram of CO2 is you may remember a demonstration video that was included as part of earlier lectures where we put carbon dioxide into a soda bottle and observed the triple point behavior. We had liquid CO2, solid CO2, and gaseous CO2 all in the same bottle. And maybe some of you feared for my safety, I'm not sure, and you wondered why that bottle didn't explode. But one should remember that the triple point has that very happy characteristic that you are at a fixed temperature and pressure. So as long as you have all three phases present, if we look down here, here's the triple point, you know that that bottle is at minus 56.6 degrees Celsius, which is why it's good to wear gloves while shaking the bottle. And the pressure is only five bar, so a little over five atmospheres of pressure, that soda bottle can handle that. Now, if while you're doing the demonstration, you observe that the solid phase goes away, now there's a degree of freedom left in the system. You will traverse the liquid vapor coexistence curve. As the temperature warms up, the liquid and vapor that are stuck in that bottle will begin to increase in pressure. And it's about this stage that you want to drop the bottle and begin running as you start to approach the 74 bar pressure of the critical point. And no, those soda bottles are not made to withstand that kind of pressure. And yes, they will explode if you try that, uh, try that experiment at home. So don't, unless it's contained. Just Actually, just don't. And as I mentioned in that uh, first set of lectures, this uh, phenomena, understanding this phase diagram, is actually extremely useful for uh, dry cleaning. And it proves true that supercritical CO2 is used as a dry cleaning fluid. It's actually also used <clears throat> as a decaffeinating agent. So if you drink decaffeinated coffee, I've never really understood why one would, but if you drink decaffeinated coffee, that's how the caffeine is removed in a different machine, incidentally. It's not right after they take out all those clean clothes. So that's it for, uh, for this particular lecture. And next, we're going to take a look at phase diagrams and their connection to the Gibbs free energy.